Hello everyone and welcome to lecture 5 of Grass Allergies. I am as always Dr. Jason Lee, Clinical Immunology and Allergy in Toronto, Ontario. In lecture 4 we talked about seasonal allergies and the symptoms of allergies. Now, I told you in lecture 4 that the symptoms of allergies depend on where the pollen hits in your body and where your body has chosen to react to. Now, the logical extension of this is what we can do about this other than non-drug therapy. I also discussed how it's very hard to not get exposed to any pollen at all unless you live inside all day, which is not practical for the vast majority of people. Let's talk about the eyes first. There's different levels of eye drops you can take. A lot of people just like to use lubricating eye drops. This will flush out the allergens in your eye reducing the allergen load. As I mentioned before, the level of allergen exposure directly corresponds to the symptoms. So if you remove some of the allergen, this will decrease. Other eye drops that are available over the counter rely on constricting the blood vessels of the eye. This temporarily shuts off tear production or diminishes tear production, and as such it will help with watery eyes. Occasionally, some of the preservatives in these eye drops can sting and cause further irritation, but this is a very small minority of people that experience this. Other eye drops that are available over the counter include antihistamine type eye drops. These will also reduce the after effect of the mast cell producing histamine. By limiting histamine, you remove some of the effects of histamine, such as dilation of blood vessels, and itchiness, wateriness. Prescription eye therapies include ocular non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. This works similarly like ibuprofen would for the body, taking it in a pill, except it is limited to your eyes. By limiting the inflammation that can occur, you can reduce your symptoms of allergies. More commonly though, a prescription eye drop may be an antihistamine or what we call an antihistamine mast cell combination drop. In Canada, the common one that's available for this is chromalin or olopatadine. There are a few other formulations available in other countries. These eye drops work by both dealing with the after effects of histamine release from the mast cells and not having the mast cells degranulate in the first place or activate in the first place. You can imagine these are by far and away the most effective and safe drops for the eye. If you have a very serious eye allergy condition, oftentimes we'll use steroid eye drops. There are real serious potential side effects of steroid eye drops and I recommend anyone getting this seek the help and advice of a qualified ophthalmologist. Now let's talk about the nose. Some people believe in nasal rinse and irrigation. I have no doubt that this is at least somewhat helpful, but the studies show that it has a small but modest effect at best. When you have a complication of a sinus infection, the evidence is that a hypertonic saline rinse, meaning a high salt concentration rinse, may be somewhat helpful for reducing the duration of a sinus infection. Again, this is like removing some of the allergen burden from the nose. By flushing and washing everything out, you decrease the allergens, decrease the number of mast cells that get turned on. Nasal gels that act as a barrier, they don't work very well, um, mainly because you can only coat the inside of your nose. Your nasal cavity runs quite deep and no one, no matter how good you are, can get these gels that act as a physical block all the way to the posterior nasal cavity. The posterior nasal cavity happens to be where all the sinuses drain. We call these sinus ostea. Other nose sprays include anticholinergic nose sprays. These work by drying up the mucous membrane secretions. They work really well for a runny nose, but they don't address the underlying cause. More typically, as per most national and international guidelines for treating the nose, a nasal steroid will be used. Now, a lot of patients have a phobia of steroids, and it is true that they do occasionally cause side effects, but it's up to you to speak to your doctor to determine if the risks 
outweigh the benefits or vice versa. Nasal steroids are very effective in treating nasal congestion in particular, but they also treat the other symptoms of runny nose and post-nasal drip. There are many nasal steroid formulations available, so speak to your doctor to see which one may be right for you. Now, other nasal sprays include a combination of nasal steroids, antihistamines, or anticholinergics. This is helpful for, again, limiting the after effects of histamine release. If your lungs are affected, this will manifest as what we call extrinsic asthma or allergic asthma. To best treat the lungs, by far and away, the most effective intervention that we have available in medicine are inhaled corticosteroids. Inhaled steroids act by limiting the inflammation that occurs from inside your breathing tubes in the lung. Sometimes you need a quick relief of your symptoms, and to accomplish this, we will use what are known as bronchodilators. The bronchodilators work by relaxing the muscles that wrap around the airways. However, if you have persistent symptoms or if you find that you're using your inhalers frequently, you will need an inhaled steroid as a controller medication. Why do we call these controllers? Well, because inhaled steroids limit the inflammation from the cells that line the inside of the lungs. These cells are actually what gives the signal for the muscle to become twitchy and cause symptoms and asthma. In addition, by shutting off the inflammation within the tubes of the lungs, you also limit the damage that can occur and you limit the mucus production. Several studies have shown that if you only use muscle relax, uh, relaxing agents, such as long-acting bronchodilators or long-acting beta agonists to be specific, this can result in an increased chance of death. Think of it this way. If you are not cleaning the inside of the tube, but focused on only trying to add more scaffolding or relaxing the scaffolding, eventually, the inside of the tube will get plugged up. Other treatments for asthma exist, such as anti-IgE antibody therapy. This is a new, I should say newer treatment for asthma. And if you have severe asthma, this is a preferable way to treat if you have allergy-driven asthma. The anti-IgE antibody will get rid of the IgE antibodies that are critical to the mast cells degranulating other cells involved in the lungs include the eosinophil, and as I mentioned, these cells also have IgE bound to their surfaces. Those are the main medication treatments for allergies and allergies to grass. Pick the right one by speaking to a qualified professional.